establishing the Remagen Bridgehead. Vehicles in long line move up to the span named after General Ludendorff. Nazi plans called for demolition of this bridge between Remagen on the west bank and Erpel on the east. But on 7th March, 9th Armored Division patrols removed the charges before serious damage could be done, and we had a bridge intact over the Rhine. Tanks and infantry crossed to capture Erpel and surrounding high ground before pushing on inland. The bridge's railroad tracks have been planked over for vehicular traffic. Our ACAC opposes persistent enemy attempts to dive bomb the Ludendorff Bridge. Despite these attacks, the bridgehead rapidly expands. This marks the first breaching of the Rhine River line since Napoleon crossed in 1805. The Ludendorff Bridge across the Rhine at Remagen. For 10 days, it withstands aerial attacks and constant artillery fire while 1st Army troops exploit the initial breaching of the Rhine River line. Traffic in the face of the attacks must be kept to proper intervals between vehicles. A convoy of Patton equipment is ready to be unloaded for engineer battalions who begin construction despite the enemy raid. Normally a 34-hour job, the bridging operations are hours behind as Nazi fire flares up repeatedly. Under heavy enemy fire, combat engineers out on the incompleted span dash back to shore. Despite these attacks, the first Ponton Bridge is completed and handling heavy traffic on 14th March. Armor is raced across the new link as the Remagen Bridgehead begins expanding into a wide front. Both the Ponton Span and the adjacent Ludendorff Bridge are still under enemy fire. The engineer battalion working on the Ludendorff strengthens the roadbed, which was improvised to allow vehicles to travel over the railway ties. Damaged structural members of the bridge are removed by engineers. But weakened by the cumulative damage, the Ludendorff collapses on 17th March, while about 300 engineer troops are working on it. Many of them are hurled into the swift icy water or crushed by the falling structure. Rescue crews saved those who managed to cling to sections of the span as it gave way. Rescuers swim out into the Rhine to reach injured men kept afloat by driftwood. bringing out a line to pull in the surviving engineers. Quick action of this type saves many lives. When the 512-foot center span of the Ludendorff gave way, there was no vehicular traffic crossing the bridge. Crews extricate bodies pinned beneath the heavy beams. Three days later, on 20th March, Supreme Headquarters announces that the collapsed Ludendorff Bridge has been abandoned. The dispatch says that the span is no longer necessary because of the existence of other facilities across the Rhine into the Remagen Bridgehead. <laughs> 